gonna say go, go, go. Red is ready, Toysen is ready, production crew is ready. Second map, back with the girls. Gonna be interesting, man. I, I, I expect Red to continue playing the same tried and true style yeah. that he does so well. Lots uh, of mirrors. I, I feel like uh, early aggression on this map can be cool but, or, or good for Terran because it's very narrow and, and there's lots of places where you can micro. So we'll see what Thorzane opts for. I, I, I couldn't possibly predict exactly what would happen, but I think two racks is pretty good on this map. I still think we're going to see a more aggressive choice in general, mm. but I, what I do think is perhaps going to work against his momentum. I mean, he killed four Reapers in the start. That's such an awesome start, and how are you going to get back from it? I mean, that's not what it's something he's going to get again. Right. Anyway, guys, small break. We'll be right back. Map 2. guys, welcome back to the 2011 European Battle.net Invitational. Of course, this is the Championship Bracket Final. Red is currently leading 1-0. We are playing best of three. Uh, for you guys wondering what's going to be in the overall final, that means that the guy from the loser bracket or the consolation bracket has to win two best of threes on the row. So there is a clear advantage for the player as well who wins the winner bracket. And rightfully so. If you get all yeah, the way to the final without losing a set, then you deserve that... Uh, that um that luxury, in my opinion. No. I, I saw there was some debate on the forums about you know, that's not fair to the guy in the loser's bracket, but you know, the guy yeah, in the no, loser's uh, bracket got I knocked down. You know, so. Yeah, sometimes you see like they make it a best of five with a 1 0 lead, but I don't really think that justifies. I mean, that 1 0 lead, th that can be gone literally with one cheesy game, you yeah. know, and that's not really worth it. I think a best of three makes a lot more sense. I like the system. I agree. I think it's very fair. And once again, of course, guys, the top two of this tournament qualifies for BlizzCon later this year. Of course, the prize pool is going to, use it, uh, going to be huge at BlizzCon. Not only that, but it's just such a yeah, man, that's like the event, the Blizzard yeah. event. So we see Thorzane walling in at the top of his ramp, and uh, oh no, did you? You didn't catch that. He actually moved all of his SCVs off of mining for a second before correcting it. So maybe he's a little bit rattled here. Let's take a look at the APM. If he's uh, spamming a lot or not, oh, it doesn't seem like it. Both players starting off relatively easily. Red, one of those players though, who really speeds up in the middle of the game. Yeah, actually, uh, I've asked Red about, hey man, how do you feel about spamming in the early game? He's like, oh, I think it's stupid. That's actually <laughs> what he told me because like, too many people feel like they have to overly inflate their APM. Just play as fast as you need to play. Right. You know, and that's just kind of Red's. That's like his mantra, dude. He just does what he needs to do. He doesn't. <laughs> well, everyone knows how fast Red is, of course. Otherwise, there's no way you could have been such a successful Brute War player. Uh, not like I have a Brute War pass, but that's something I do know. Man. I played a couple of Brute War games, and I was like, oh, this is no fun, man. I have so much money. <laughs> it's <laughs> a hard game to play, man. You need 200 APM just to produce units. Yeah, certainly if you like come from a Walker 3 pass, like, if you play Walker 3 before Brute War, then it's really, really hard. Because I got used to the more advanced control already, mm. controls already, which were not as easy as the start of two groupings, which got even better because you can group so many units in one group. But uh, yeah, of course. The so production <laughs> buildings, that's everything that matters. <laughs> we do have the uh, the one gas down here for Thorze. He saved up over 100, uh, over, uh, no, he's, yeah, he's saving up for the factory. What is going on? That's weird. I guess yeah. that's for the add-on that's maybe reactor to Hellions. I was a little confused there why he would lift at that time, but I guess he's got the Marines on the ramp to keep the scout from getting in. Red has gone hatch first again. Uh, 15 hatch, 15 pool, 17 gas. This is just, I mean, this is how he plays, and uh, he's moving into just normal Red early game. Transferred four drones. I think that's uh, yeah, that's a reasonable number considering fact you don't want to transfer it too much in the early stages of the game because if you take a look at his main base, he only has right now nine drones left uh, mining from his mineral patch. So it makes absolutely no sense to transfer more than uh, three, four, five. Uh, I've got to say, Rotterdam, I'm not a huge fan of Thorzane's opening here, and the reason for that is because I mean, he's opting for a reactor hellion into yeah. expand. Uh, you know, it's good that he's you know looking forward, but I don't think Hellions are that effective on this map because it's so narrow. It's really really easy to just drop a couple spine crawlers and make it virtually impossible for Hellions to do damage. I think yep. uh, I think a Reaper expand might have been a you know a better choice like he did in the last game, and he he was really effective with it in the last game as well. You know, the only thing I'm really uh, really curious about is what is the Hellion number that Torsen is aiming for. I mean, if you take a look at Happy for instance, he always loves to go with six Hellions. You know, he doesn't mix it up. A couple of other uh, uh, Terrans sometimes go with four, and some Terrans kind of do overdo it with ten, and that actually might work because the push comes so late that the Zerg like, all right, most likely he's not going to sacrifice Hellions anymore. Zerg is going to be a little bit less careless, just get a, that additional round of drones perhaps and not wall off anymore, not have that queen on the ramp. And then suddenly if 10 Hellions drop by, right. drive by, you never know what you're going to face. And it's really hard for Zerg in this phase of the game to uh, yeah, predict how many Hellions is my opponent going to make. Wow, Red's getting a really, really, really fast layer, man. Layer starting up before six minutes. He's got the one spine crawler down. These two Hellions are going to poke up the ramp. Red should be able to back him up. Yeah, he will. And uh, like you said, Thorzane has chosen to stop at four Hellions. 
for lifting off that factory and going to put okay. a tech lab on it. Also has stim on the way. Yeah, that's a very fast stim actually on towards inside. Now he's going to get for one more barracks. And it's a, I actually think we're going to uh, perhaps see a relatively fast uh, marine marine tank push. It seems something like that. Perhaps with one matter fact just to have uh, to be able to heal up your marines a little bit after you stim. Interesting decision right here by Torzen. Red of course can't be aware of the fact that Torzen only stopped. Uh, that Torzen is only going to produce four hellions, which yeah, re really is a relatively low amount of hellions. Yeah, but if Red were to scout the uh, the natural of Thorzane. I think he'd be able to see that upgrade. Oh, look at that. Overlord coming in. And he's, he's only going to see that expansion, though. Yeah. But if he sees that uh, that that that, that uh, tech lab is researching, that's going to give him the attack timing. Exactly. Uh, Terran players start stem two mornings, or two minutes, or I guess it's three minutes before they want to attack. And it's very, very rare that you see stem complete and no push actually happen. Yep, certainly when you see your opponent researching stem that quick. Red is not completely aware of that yet. Of course, as we know, Red, from the previous uh, times, yeah, most of the time before he actually starts Mudas, he has like two Zerglings on the map, and somehow he's able to fight off any aggression, because Red is just very good. I love how uh, Torsen is actually doing an excellent job at so far denying this creep to Mr. Uh, this Timur is up. He might actually shoot one of his own Hellions. Uh, this is something that I've seen the Muslim do a couple of times. No, he's not doing that as of yet. I love that move, and you can put like one Hellion over yeah. here, and you shoot your own Hellion, you can take out the creep tumor, but Torsen not decides not to do that. I think it would have been a uh, the correct decision, actually. What I really like about Thorzane's play right here is he's containing Red, he's keeping him in his base, and he's denying scouting. So Thorzane's going for what we, I mean, it looks like a relatively quick timing push, probably yeah. with two tanks and however many Marines he can crank out before Stim finishes. And Red's got no idea this is on the way. Red's actually droning really hard and waiting for his Spire to finish. This push yeah. could be super, super effective here. Red's got no Banelings anywhere in sight. Mm -hmm. Banelings just now starting. Spire about to finish up. He's going to dump all of his gas into Mutas, and he doesn't even have that much yeah. gas. I mean, this is uh, this is looking. I mean, if Thorzane goes, I think he could do some good damage. I think I definitely think so as well. Uh, the Bainling has is halfway done, so we might see a couple of Bainlings, but. I doubt that he's going to be able to get a couple of really good uh, detonates or explodes off uh, for that matter. Now we do see that Overlord coming in from the left side of the base, so he's actually going to scout this factory, the factory which is not even, uh, or at least the tech lab, which is not even spinning anymore because Siege is already completed. I guess Red is going to be perhaps slightly confused about that. Yeah, he sees that, uh, he sees oh. the, the tech lab on the racks actually lit up in combat shields. It's not going. what he thinks. Yeah, so I guess it's, maybe Thorzen's waiting for combat shields before he pushes. That makes, that makes a lot of sense. Um, meanwhile, Rhett taking a third base, being continuing to be really active with these Hellions, but the Mutas are out, and Speedlings on Creeper actually faster than Hellions, so Rhett will pick up a couple of uh, a couple Hellion hill kills here before uh, Thorzane decides he needs to back up and go home. If Thorzane decides actually to push his third base, I think it's going to get really tough for Rhett. Slowly but steady, Creeper's making its way over to that base, though, but if Thorzane would move out, uh, let's say, within the next 30 seconds, I think this is going to really get tough. And I really think Thorzane is going to move out as soon as he has one Manifact, perhaps one more, but I don't really think so. I think he just wants one Manifact so he's able to heal up his Marines just a little bit after stimming a couple of times, and I 100% agree with you. I think this looks really promising. Man, so Combat Shield's just finished, and Thorzane sieges up in his natural and just kind of sits back. And, you know, Rotterdam, I feel like he's making a mistake. If he doesn't push soon, he's going to yeah. miss his window because Rhett's added a lot of drones. His third base is going to be up soon, and he's going to have he's going to be in pure macro mode, right? He's only he's only making units right now. He's not droning anymore. He's comfortable where he is, and these mutas are now out on the map, giving him all this map control. So really, you know, I, I liked what looked to be an aggressive opening out of Thorzane, but he's just not really doing anything with it. Torzen is uh, not yet aware of this third base though, he's probably expecting it to be here anytime soon. He does have that Hellion cruising around over there, uh, and then he will see, now this Hellion is going to try to make Ooh, his way over, oh, Hellion yeah, so fast. Yeah, <laughs> Hellions are so, so fast. <laughs> <laughs> and I think this is actually excellent, not only did he see the hatchery, he exactly sees when it's completed, he sees that the drones are just getting transferred right now. This was probably the perfect yeah, moment to scout that as base. As soon as he realizes what's up, he unsieges and he's getting ready to and push. Look at, at Red producing 10 drones right at once, and even though he's already at 70 drones, going for 80 drones right now, well, um, bailing speed is more than halfway done, but this push is scary, even though Torsen is down, 20 supplies still being used right now, and a couple of these marines trying to catch up with these mutas. The muta oh, number is not that high either. Counter attack, this is Red style in a big way, he's going to catch a bunch of lings, uh, Thorzen very nicely backing up, no. the lings get up, they're going to surround that siege tank and kill it almost immediately, all those marines are going to fall, meanwhile Thorzen is committing to this attack on Red's third base, but there's spine crawlers there, and Red has 11 banelings that are just finishing up, baneling speed is done, so there are speed banes out, and if Red can crush this army, he's going to be in good shape, oh, but Thorzane has a good position here, tanks are in a good spot, marines are running away, and the banelings all blowing up on siege tanks with Thorzane, oh wow, but the marines all do get cleaned up, so Red will defend this. Can he save the hatchery though? There's one more tank volley going to go off, but yes, Rhett does hold. 
Red holds indeed. Excellent defense right there by the Dutch Zerg once again. But that pretty much everything got decided right here by this little Zerg being wrong by. That forced towards him from not being able to send in reinforcement. And he got actually really unlucky. I mean, he wanted to re retreat it with a couple of Marines. Then he was blocking his own supply depot, so he couldn't raise it. Then the Zerglings managed to stream in. Of course, Zerglings so incredible fast. <laughs> Quite unlucky for Torsen right there. Even though, on the other hand, I do feel that by the time everyone knows Red so well, shouldn't you be thinking of that? I mean, you know that Red is potentially going to try to do something like that. Uh, yes, I, I agree. I could not agree more. Look at this Red setting up for another counter, knocking out the rocks and the natural of Thorzain. And right now, Rotterdam, Thorzain is in so much trouble. He's lost all map yeah. control. His army has been kept in check. He lost a bunch of siege tanks. He only, got, he only has the three tanks out right now. And Red is just building units. He's just building stuff. He's got a 50 supply lead right now. He's a little bit supply blocked which is uncharacteristic of Rhett, and he's not actually building any overlords, so he's going to be supply blocked for a while, still not making any overlords. Rhett, what are you doing? So, uh, all right, four overlords <laughs> now on the way from Rhett as he realizes uh, his peril. He's throwing down his fourth base, and he's just looking so strong. You know, in spite of that small little macro hiccup, he's, he's way ahead, and, he, and he's, just, he's just dominating he's dominating the map right now, and he's just looking so good. Red making sure he's not going to get supply capped again. Eight overlords at once. The um, Mila upgrade is on way as well. The 2 0, that is, or plus 2, however you want to call it. Um, so, yeah, so far, good job. If you take a look at Torsen's point of view, meanwhile, once again, these Mila's are engaging. Still being used. One Mila does bite the dust, but nevertheless, it's okay. I mean, Red is still containing uh, Torsen. Torsen is going to slowly but steady try to float over this command center, but he knows he's going to have to be careful. This turret that has to go up. If this command yeah. center is, is going to fall,